Hey guys, it's Agonzi Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel because that's really gonna help me in improving this community. And today I'm gonna continue and do another video on Magic Leap. I'm super excited because I'm gonna be adding a new example to the audio spectrum that we created previously. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you how this project is set up. And just so you know, this is a continuation of the Magic Leap Audio Spectrum project that we created last time. I'm going to be putting that link in the description of this video. So let me show you how this works. Let me hit play and, and see what happens. So I can hit basically the letter S, and that's going to change and that's going to change the type of song that I'm playing. You can see that the title gets changed on the canvas. So you can see I'm going to hit S one more time. So, so the songs are getting selected randomly and, and also the as we're selecting a song, we're changing the song name here. So for the Unity Editor, you can press the letter S and that's going to shuffle shuffle the music. So, but in reality, what I, what I wanna do this video for is so that we can do it with our hands. So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna basically set this to mute so that we can see, so I can show you and explain to you what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna hit play. And as soon as I hit play, the, you know, the shapes are gonna be generated based on the music, but there is this middle section here and this is where we're going to be standing up so this is where the camera is and the idea is that we you know we can open our hands as, a, as, a, as we open our hands the music gets shuffled and we can see the changes around us by wearing the magic lip so that's the goal of of this demo i might add some other things this also includes another another scene scene one which basically allows you to stop the deformation on different 3D models, also using what I call muting. So if you mute the audio, everything stops. The spheres that were supposed to get deformed, they don't get deformed anymore. So, so there's two examples here for you. I'm gonna be checking this into GitHub. So let me show you a couple of things and and how this is coded. And if we go to the hierarchy, we can see that we have we have a couple of controllers in here, and I call them controllers because they they do a lot of the work. The, the first one is the hand tracking controller, and this one is basically I'm adding, I added functionality to this. What I, what I had on the previous video is I was basically calling, calling a specific methods inside of the hand tracking controller. So I wanted this to be more flexible, and instead of doing that, I'm basically using Unity Events. And if you haven't used Unity Events before, all it is is basically it gives you flexibility of what needs to be called when a Unity event is invoked. So for instance, in this one, I have a Unity event called on face key pose detected. I also have one called on open hand back key pose detected. And what that gives you, it gives you a lot of control of what, on what things are gonna get called when this gets detected. So the first the first thing that I do when the when the fist is detected, and I thought it was gonna be the open hand, I also, did, I actually did the fist. And we can swap that as easy as moving these methods in here. But we can do the face, that's fine. So as soon as I do the face, what's gonna happen, we're gonna be calling the audio manager and then shuffling the audio. We're also going to get the name of the song and basically set it on the UI. So you can see that with the Unity event, I can go in and, and basically call any method that I want from any game object that has a public, a public method or a public property. All right, so now that we have that set, the, the other thing that I have in here too is the Create Shape Manager. And the, the responsibility of this one is to basically create the dynamic shapes that you see. So I have different options. I can change the radius. I can change how many objects I want to be placed. If I want to say 300 objects and basically increment the radius because you are maybe in a bigger area, then you can do that. Also, the sample multiplier is pretty is pretty powerful. So let me show you how how this goes gonna get how this is gonna get changed as I as I make changes to the inspector. So right now you can see that you know things are there things are looking great and if I go and change the speed I can change the speed and increment the speed of the 
of the deformation on the scale, basically that's what's happening. We're not deforming, we're scaling on Y. And if I increment it, the speed is gonna definitely change. I can set it back to, maybe you wanna have a, a slow motion scene or I wanted to do 1.1. You can see that that's changing just a little bit. Or I can go back to you know what I originally had, which was 15. I can also change the type of primitive that I that I'm going to have in the simulation. I can do I can change the sample multiplier. You can see how that is also changing. This one is not changing the speed, but it's changing also the the speed of how they how they are they are changing. So it's basically what I'm doing with the sample multipliers. I'm grabbing the the value that comes from the audio spectrum and then I'm multiplying it by a number because that value is too small. And then the scale speed allows me to multiply the vector tree that I'm creating to deform this one. So we, with those two, it gives you a lot of flexibility. The Let me go back to, let me undo that so we can see how, there we go. So let's go back to it. Okay, so the other thing is the radius and these ones you won't be able to change in real time because of the way that I implement it. But if you wanted to change it to say, we wanted to say, let's say four, and I wanted to see maybe 300, 300 objects be placed. You can also do that and you're gonna see that it's much bigger now because the radius is a lot bigger. Uh, and that's cool, maybe you have a stadium, a stadium and you want, you know, walk around and see how that, how that works. So let me go ahead and hit play to stop it. All right, so we have 0.5 and then also 150. So the next thing that, I, that I'm gonna show you is the, what I did on the hand tracking controller, but I'm gonna show you in the, in the code we go ahead and open it up. So I have a couple of things, nothing changing here. The the ones that changed were the um, first key post detected. This used to be methods independently that we would call from here. So like I said, we added unity events. So I have two unity events that I'm exposing. And the cool thing about those is I don't need to know what's inside of those. I don't need to know that there is a method being called to the audio manager and that there is a method, another method getting called to the audio manager. All I need to do is basically say, okay, on on, on face key post detected. If that is defined, then call the invoke. And this is defined, then I call the invoke when these things happen. So that gives us a lot of flexibility. I didn't change anything else in here. All I did was just making a call to the unit event invoke method. So let's go back and look at other things that I did as well. So let's look at how the spectrum manager works right now and see if I made any changes. I don't believe I made any changes other than adding a new method. So, so any, everything in here, it's just, you know, how it was. The, for those of you who haven't seen this video, all I'm doing is basically calling the get spectrum data and then filling the data that I get, that I get from the audio into an array of samples. And the array of sample happened to be by 112. You can increment that if you like. And all I did here was add a new method to swap the audio source because if I hit the S key or if I do a fist, now that we notice that it was a fist, we can swap the audio source that is being played. So I'm stopping the previous one and basically associating the new one to this spectrum manager. So now let's go back and look at the last file that I, that I added. So the last file that I added was the audio manager. And this one is the one that keeps track of all the different songs that I'm playing in the, in the simulation. So I have track one, track two, three, four, five, and also the original one that I had on the Spectrum Manager. So just so you know, these audio files are from the YouTube library. The, they are completely open source. YouTube puts them out so that you can use them. And in fact, I can show you here the audio library. If you need to use, if you need to use this library, you you know you're more than welcome to use that. And let's go back into let's go back into Unity. So. So that's, that's basically what it does. Let's go into the audio manager script and show you the implementation. So the first thing that I do is I create a, an array of audio sources and that is the array that you're seeing here in the inspector where I'm putting all the different audio, audio tracks or songs. And I also have a label, a text box for the song, which is the one that you see in the canvas. So I just have a reference in there so that I can update it easily from here. And I have the current audio source that, it, that is being played. So as soon as I hit the letter S or, or, if I, or I do a fist, I set this current audio source to the current one that is randomly selected. And then I have some just making sure that you have associated the sound text and also the audio sources. Otherwise, this, this, 
game object it's going to get disabled and then the first thing that I do I get the sum name so like I said I'm using the unity editor compiler flag to be able to test this through the inspector by calling the shuffle audio and get some name when I press the letter S otherwise I call this from the uh, actual unity event when we do a fist and the way that this works is, is actually very simple I get a number from 0 to the length of the audio sources array then once I get a number a random number I, I get the audio source one of the audio sources randomly I set it to the current audio source then I swap the spectrum manager instance audio source to the one that we just randomly selected and then I just hit play to play that song then the get song name implementation is also very simple because we're basically setting the song text to the clip name and we're replacing the underscores because the name of the files have underscores so that's everything that I really wanted to show you in unity let's just play one more time just to see how this works and we can we can hit a mute so we can listen to it all right so that's how that works let me show you how this runs in the magic leap now Alright guys, thank you very much for watching this video, I really appreciate your time and if you have any questions please let me know. Also be sure to check out GameDev.net, they have amazing resources for game developers. If you're starting out or if you're in advance, they have resources for everyone. Also be sure to check out my Patreon page where I'm basically putting early access to source code. I'm also posting a lot of different things that happen behind the scenes, so be sure to check it out. Thank you guys.